we manage the horse's pain as best as we can, and we, when we feel like we're not managing their pain anymore, that's when we say, look, we're sorry, but you know, he's not comfortable anymore. Um, and then what is the prognosis and outcome? You know, what's the horse's quality of life going to be like? A lot of people are worried, like, is he in pain? Is he suffering? You know, obviously that's the point whenever people are like, okay, we're sorry, but it's time to go. Um, okay, so now we're getting into surgeries. Um, so this is a tenoscopic surgery. Basically, I'm not going to use the big medical words for this because it's going to get really confusing, but basically the horse tore his flexor tendon in his left front leg. Um, so what we did is we went in with cameras. So yeah, I'll show you that on the next slide. But basically in the surgery sheet, I just came up with, you know, something that we could essentially send home with the owners. And that was my goal. I wanted to be able to say, look, this is, you know, here you go. This is what we did. So this is the diagnosis, why we did it, the procedure, our goals during the procedure, the process, and the recovery. So um, the diagnosis was obviously a, t a digital flexor tear. And um, the procedure was to transect the annual, like, annual, annular ligament. I can never say that word. And then um, reduce the swelling and inflammation that the disease is causing, not the disease, the debris is causing, because um, it will constrict the horse from moving comfortably. So here are the pictures. So the device that's in the horse's leg right now is actually the camera, and then we have fluids hooked up to that so that there's not a lot of blood like blocking the camera's view. And then right where the hose is laying kind of on the horse's leg, that's where the second incision ends up being made. So this is what it looks like on the computer screen. So that is the massive tendon that was torn. And then those are obviously his forceps. So, And then this is what it looked like after we removed everything. So you can see the little thing that's curled up. Basically when you pull on a tendon like that, it kind of frays like jeans. So you know you can pull and pull and pull as much as you want, but the whole thing is never going to come off cleanly. Um, and then here's a video. So he's just like pulling that thing around. I mean, you can imagine it's not very comfortable. And we don't make like artificial tendons for horses, so it it was just sliding around like a worm almost. It was really it was interesting, I guess, to say the least. Okay, um, this is actually my favorite one. So um, this is Forrest. I always talk about Forrest in this class, so we can say Forrest's name. But um, basically, Forrest had incomplete ossification. Um, so what is incomplete ossification? Um, basically, it's when the bones aren't, the cartilage hasn't turned to bone quick enough. So Forrest was born 60 days premature, um, and he had incomplete ossification of his carpus and his tarsus. So his carpus is his knees, and his tarsus is his hocks. Um, so... When I did the basic understanding, I just kind of talked about like what is incomplete ossification, what do we expect, when does it happen, which is in premature foals a good majority of the time. And then for the anatomy, um, I just included pictures of the lateral and then the flex lateral and then the frontal view of an x-ray of a normal knee in a hawk. And then I labeled them with bolded letters and then that way people know like this is what we're talking about because not everyone knows every bone of the horse's body. So I just wanted to have that in there for people to be able to refer to. And then the case was Forrest. Um, so background information, just he, he was born 60 days premature. Um, when he came into the clinic, he was 50 pounds. And they were not expecting Forrest to come, obviously. I wouldn't be expecting him either. His owners were actually at a concert. So when they came home, surprise, there's Forrest. Um, Forrest could not get up, though. He looked like a little spider. And um, we x-rayed him on day two at the clinic. We had to put him on IV fluids because obviously, you know, born premature, you're not nursing your mom, you know, you're not feeling too great. Um, so on day two, we did x-rays, and this is what they looked like. So obviously, all of that is supposed to be full with white, and it's not. So a month later, we did more x-rays. So as you can see, Forrest's knees are getting a lot better. But the one problem is his hocks. So I don't know if you can see the outline of the horse's like actual leg, like where the skin is on the first picture, but that was like a normal hock. Like there's supposed to be a bend, kind of looks like a bow. And then the other one, his hocks have straightened out a lot. And so initially we put splints on him because we were trying to get his knees as straight as possible and then we were trying to keep his hocks from bowing outwards. 
Um, but it ended up making him too straight, and he ended up getting sores all over his legs. But um, basically, the bone, I don't, I don't have like a pointer, I don't think. Do I? Does it point? Oh, okay. This yeah, thing right here is supposed to be twisted back here. So see how like right here it's rotated backwards? It rotated forward, so it's obviously not doing this job. But this is Forrest now. This is his most recent x-ray. So his knees look great. Like this is a normal horse's knee basically. But these are getting, his hocks are getting worse. And the whole thing with Forrest is he was um, bred to be a performance horse. So um, obviously Western pleasure with Forrest is probably not going to be a thing, um, unfortunately. But um, he could potentially be ridden in the future. It just kind of depends on how he progresses. Um, so what Dr. Holmeyer wants to do is recheck in um, six months to see if the x-rays have changed at all and just let him be a horse. I mean, baby horses are meant to be outside running around in the pasture with their mom and he's been cooped up in a stall since he was born. So um, it's kind of sad. So anyways, um, so with Forrest we've been doing hydrotherapy. So I don't know if you know what that is, but it's just water therapy. So we walk him on a treadmill and Dr. Holtmeyer decided to film the video sideways. So. So this is Forrest, and you can see the sores on his legs, um, that's just from the wraps, and we wrap him like right after he gets out of the water, so like the moisture doesn't really help that much, but Forrest is a character. He bites people's hair, he kicks people, he licks the water when he's walking, he thinks he owns the place, he's ridiculous, but he's awesome. He's definitely my favorite thing that we've had, but he's so cute with him. I'm kind of sad that we're waiting six months to check him. <laughs> I want to go back. <laughs> but anyways. Oh, and the other person in the video, that's Pete. He's an intern from Brazil. Or, yes. Yes, I believe he's from Brazil. He's awesome. Okay, so this is another one that I'm going to talk about, but I haven't yet. But I do have the pictures. So, um, this is basically an ovary removal. What happened is, um, this horse started acting like a stallion. And she's a girl. So she's not supposed to act that way. So we were like, okay, something's not right. So we checked her ovaries, and it ended up being like the size of a volleyball. I don't think this is working anymore. Oh. I think since I used the mouse, it's confused. So this is, we did this one again with the camera. And the horse was actually standing up. She wasn't laying down, and she was awake. So I can imagine that being poked like this and getting an ovary removed from you would not be comfortable while you're awake and you're standing up. So this is the ovary. It came out the size of a volleyball. And that is not normal, <laughs> as you could probably assume. But this was, this was a really cool surgery. Um, I had the option to either go float teeth or watch this, and like, I obviously picked this. I don't know if Dr. Holmeyer was disappointed or not. But anyways. OK, and then the next surgery I got to see was a colic surgery. This is the most recent one that I've seen. Um, so basically, this horse uh, had had a fall nine days before the surgery, and she was still really, really uncomfortable. Well, she had had colic surgery before, and so they decided to check her for colic, and sure enough, um, she had a large colon um, torsion, which is where it twists on itself. Um, so that was her diagnosis. So uh, the reason that this happens is the colon, uh, the colon gets descended with gas, and um, then the amount of the distension will start to reduce the blood flow to the horse, um, to the horse's heart, and so obviously that could be really bad. So the procedure was to untwist the large colon and then relieve the gas distension. Um, so obviously we were just trying to undo the twist and then evaluate the horse to see if anything else was going on. So let me just explain this really quickly because a lot of people get confused. So the horse is laying on its back. Um, Dr. Conch is probably in like the back half of the horse, probably like the back two thirds of the horse is cut open. So it starts off with like an 18 to 24 inch incision and basically as soon as you cut it open everything just kind of starts to fall out. Um, so the video is going to be really gross for some people, um, so if you get queasy I'm sorry, but I was queasy because of the smell in there. But anyway, so this is the large intestine and basically, I'll show you a picture. This thing was bad. like. That's, that does not look comfortable. If my large intestine was twisted like that, I would not be happy. 
But anyway, so we pulled it out because it weighed like 250 pounds. And you can imagine Dr. Conch has been on his feet for like an hour doing his surgery. And he's trying to untwist this thing and it's way too heavy. So we pull out this table and this is a huge manure bucket that we brought in from the barn. And what's going to happen in this video is he's going to make an incision right there on that intestine and we're going to remove all the feces from this horse's body. Um, so if you get crazy, don't watch. Um, the smell was awful. We ended up filling up two of these pink buckets all the way full. And I was so scared they were going to spill it on me. Um, but anyway, so um, we'll just watch it because... I'll zoom in in a second. And the Darth Vader noise is the anesthesia machine. Yeah, and you, this has been trapped in this horse's body for like a couple of days, so you can imagine the smell was pretty awful. And he did this for a long time, trying to empty out all that stuff. But anyways, um, I was actually really concerned about this horse because when you do something like this, you're obviously sticking a water hose like inside the horse's body that is not sterile, might I add. That was probably the water hose from outside. and. Also, this horse's poop is getting all over its intestines that are going to go back inside its body. So, like, you're trying to keep it as sterile as possible, but when there's poop everywhere, like, it's very complicated. And I just, I felt bad for everyone who had to um, worry about her afterwards because you never know. But anyways, so um, with colic surgery, the biggest thing is you never know if the horse is actually going to wake up because obviously you know you're pulling a lot of stuff out of the horse's body you're changing a lot really quickly when this horse has been used to its stomach being twisted like that and suddenly it's untwisted you know the relief can put them into shock um, and they've been under anesthesia Dr. Clonch always says the longer the horse has been underneath anesthesia the more you have to worry because you want to try to get them awake as fast as possible because the anesthesia can get to them so um, yeah and then the last thing that I have on here so far is Cushing's. And um, I haven't finished this one yet, but I just, again, made like a fact sheet. I talked about, you know, what is Cushing's? Um, it's a disease that develops in older horses. We had an older horse who had laminitis, and Dr. Holtmeyer was like, oh, he, he has Cushing's too. And I was like, well, what in the world is Cushing's? So I'm in the process of researching it. But this is just what's going to be in the fact sheet, you know, exam findings, diagnosis, detection, treatment, prognosis, and outcome. Um, so my plans for the future are obviously college and then vet school. Um, Dr. Holtmeyer, Dr. Clonch, and the rest of the Weems and Stevens team have all inspired me immensely. And thanks to them, I have decided to officially become an equine veterinarian. Um, I also decided, thanks to Dr. Clonch, that I do want to become a surgeon um, and eventually spend the rest of my life floating teeth and performing colic surgery. That's what I like to tell Dr. Holtmeyer. Um, because for some reason, I love both. Um, I hope to continue to work with Dr. Holmeyer and the rest of the Williams and Stevens team over the summer until I go back to college, or go to college, not back to college, but until I go to college um, to just try to get as much hands-on experience as possible. Um, so I know everyone's probably on information overload and not everyone completely understands what any of this means, but my ISM experience has been and will be everything I have wanted and more. I never thought that Dr. Holtmeyer would trust me to do so much and allow me to do so much with how much liability he has on his hands. And I feel like from day one, he just like instilled so much trust in me that it was like, please don't mess up, Lexi, because when you mess up, like that's it. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the type of person that displays my emotion on my face, and Dr. Holmeyer has reminded me that multiple times. Aren't you excited? Like, yes, Dr. Holmeyer, what do you want me to do? Bring out pom-poms? Like, <laughs> um, but I want to thank him <laughs> for not only believing in me all this time, but for instilling such immense trust in me and for encouraging me to get to do whatever gets thrown at me. He likes to throw stuff at me a lot. Um, this experience has completely changed my life and I cannot wait to see, cannot wait to see what the future holds. So I hope you all enjoyed my presentation and wish me luck.